What's up, guys? Welcome back again to your HeroClix headquarters. Today, we've got a new team build featuring the new legacy card, Iron Man from Wheels of Vengeance, uh, originally from Avengers Assemble. I love this figure. Such an epic sculpt on this dude. He's just so huge, like a big Hulkbuster or something. Like a War Machine Hulkbuster is what I always thought he looked like. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into the team. It is an Avengers theme team, 300 points. So if you guys haven't seen the Legacy card already, here we go, we'll take a look. And this was designed by uh, Daniel Powell, who won the chance to design this at uh, the last Hero Clicks for Huntington's event. So thanks, uh, <laughs> turned out pretty great. Anyway, we'll take a look here. He does have Avengers, Stark Industries, Armor, and Scientist keywords. So pretty much what you wanna see on an Iron Man. Like I said, it is Avengers team. He's got the new Avengers team ability, which uh, is going to give him a plus one attack on certain targets, which is always nice. The trait I am Iron Man gives him energy shield deflection and impervious, and he can reduce penetrating damage. So that's great. And then on his special movement power that he gets later, he has force blast, leap climb, and sidestep. Uh, but then on his starting attack and damage powers, he does have energy explosion and penetrating psychic blast. So he can uh, do a penetrating energy explosion as well. And then this amazing damage power here gives him improved targeting for elevated, destroys blocking, hindering characters, and can make range attacks while adjacent. So all the improved targetings, basically. Then you have free, choose one to use until your next turn, outwit or range combat expert. So, you know, two great choices there. Get a little extra attack and damage from range combat expert or just outwit something. 120 points is a lot, but I have managed to find a pretty decent team to build around him with a lot of lower cost Avengers to really help uh, fill out the team and actually give us a good team. Because one of the downsides to this guy originally was being 270 points and you had like one little support figure with him maybe <laughs> or you just play a really high point game with him uh so it's nice that he's only 120 points now we have enough room to build a team around him and he is a very incredibly powerful range attacker capable of doing at least five penetrating damage on his own with like a 13 attack against certain targets without any you know outside support so i really wanted to first start with some cheap close combat figures to really go get out there, get in the fight, get in people's way to take the pressure off him. So of course the best one for that in Avengers is the Prime Hulk from Avengers 60th anniversary. Only 10 points to play this guy. So it leaves still plenty of room on our team. And uh, he of course has the trait here, Smash. If Hulk started the game on his red starting line, he may only heal from his Path of Destruction trait. And when he does, he may heal past his starting line. Improved movement destroys blocking. And so of course we're only playing him at 10 points. So he just starts right there on the last click. But if you take a look at his other trait here, when Hulk destroys one or more pieces of terrain after resolutions, heal him one click. If it was a terrain marker, roll a d6 and heal him half the result instead. Then he also has traded willpower and Hulk's defense powers have protected outwit. So very, very powerful for only 10 points. You can basically move him through a piece of terrain, roll a d6, heal him half. So potentially two or three clicks up here. And the cool thing about this is, uh, you know, we've lost the cloak of levitation, unfortunately. So I'm gonna play him with a motorcycle. And uh, now you could play him with a health cycle also. The health cycle can give him sidestep, which serves the same purpose. But I prefer the motorcycle for now uh, because it does give combat reflexes on this third click here. And if you take a look at its special, it gives improved movement characters and free move one square. So we still get the ability to move for free, which is what you want either with that or with sidestep because you want to be able to first free move to break a piece of terrain and heal. Hopefully it's an actual terrain marker. You can roll and you want to heal at least two because if you manage to heal at least two and get up to charge, he can then take an action to charge. And during the charge, he can move through another piece of terrain to break that potentially heal a couple more clicks after resolutions, but then he can make a destroy action on another piece of terrain, which is a separate action because he was a ratted. I forgot to mention that, but basically only heals once per action of his own actions. So, uh, but with charge, you kind of cheat that into, you know, it's one charge action, then it does give you a free action to make a close attack or whatever, a free close action, I should say, which you can use the close action to make a close destroy action to blow up another piece of terrain. So if you're lucky enough with the free move one, to heal up at least two clicks, 
you know, you can charge through another piece and then destroy action a third piece, getting you three rolls to heal. And if you get like a five or six each roll, you're healing three clicks each time, you can get him all the way up to top dial first turn. Even if you're just rolling an average of two each time, you're still like up here on invincible and it's still really, really great. So yeah, having just the ability to free move either from the bikes effect or a sidestep effect uh, is really, really crucial for him to really get him healed up quickly and effectively. Plus, I like the bike to give him the combat reflexes since he's going to be up close fighting most of the time anyway. It makes him that much harder to hit up close. And it also gives you the improvement of characters so you don't have to stay stuck next to anybody. He can charge on somebody else if need be. So he makes a really, really effective close attacker and just kind of a uh, distraction to keep them away from Iron Man. But then I thought, okay, so Hulk's out there doing his thing. I want some enhancement for Iron Man. I want to up his damage value even more. So one of the best enhancements for Avengers right now is good old Bats from uh, Avengers 60th. This little doggy, little ghost doggy right here is pretty amazing. He has Mystic's team ability for one, so he can be doing Mystic's damage if they do attack him. He does have traded super senses, which is really nice, some willpower, phasing even. Uh, but really he's here for a unique modifier, adjacent friendly characters that share a keyword, modify attack plus one, as well as enhancement. And for only 30 points, uh, as long as he just parks himself right next to Iron Man, he's giving him plus one attack and plus one damage for range attacks. And that is all we need him for. He's going to just sit there and be a good doggy for Iron Man and up his damage. However, the cool thing is, if he really wanted to, he's tiny size, so, you know, he Hulk could carry him into battle if he wanted to get the plus one attack. Not really necessary, but it is something you can do. So the next thing I want to do, keeping in line with these lower cost characters and another really awesome new legacy card figure is the two gun kid for a mere 20 points uh this dude is so good right now he has um, avengers team ability as well so he can up his own attack if needed on certain targets he has traded probability control which is half the reason he's here anyway it gets us another prob control for a cheap 20 points but aside from that he also has flight improved movement characters and running shot but don't have speed on his uh, special movement power here. So a seven movement running shot with a six range gives him an incredibly long reach without any assistance, like one little TK and he can hit beyond the edge of the map with the new maps, which is pretty crazy. His only downside is only having a nine attack and a 15 defense with energy shield deflection. Not great. However, he does have uh, the special attack power here that gives him at the beginning of your turn, choose an effect for two gun kid to have until your next turn. Uh, either modify damage plus one and precision strike and range make two range attacks or range make a range attack targeting all opposing characters within range line of fire. Instead of normal damage, each hit character is given an action token and is dealt one damage. So two very powerful effects to have there. You can either potentially token and damage your opponent's entire team or you can get off essentially a ranged flurry with a plus one to damage and precision strike, which is nuts. Either way, very, very powerful effects. Um, so he just really needs that buff from the uh, Avengers TA to get himself up to a 10 attack. And you could have him carry bats with him as well if you wanted. That way he'd get the plus one attack and damage also. Uh, so then he'd be rocking at least an 11 attack for uh, like four damage because of the enhancement. So that's pretty great damage potential right there. Plus he's got the traded prob if he misses, which is nice. Um, now, the main thing this team is missing is some leadership, and what better form of leadership on an Avengers team than good old Captain America? Yeah, that's right, Captain America on the Pegasus will be our leadership for this team, and he also makes a great close attacker to, you know, run in there and get the fight away from Iron Man. He does have a trait that gives him energy shield deflection and leadership and other friendly characters that are adjacent or have the Avengers or as guardian keywords uh, can use energy shield deflection as well. So he gives our whole team energy shield deflection, even though Iron Man and uh, two gun kid already have it, it does help out a lot for Hulk and even bats. So really awesome to just give them all ESD. And like I said, he's mainly here for the leadership, but he is a really good close attacker so he's got the amazing uh special movement power that gives him hypersonic speed and when he uses it and hits after resolutions you can choose up to two friendly characters this turn chosen characters can use charge and modify speed plus one when they use it uh that doesn't really matter you know we don't really have anybody else on this team that's trying to use charge uh so that part doesn't matter but 
Really, he just has hypersonic, and then he also has a special attack power that when Captain America targets a single character with an attack, that character can't use defense powers. Of course, he can just cut through any defense power. Super, super powerful. He's also improved movement characters as well, so he can you know, be running in and out of the fight as needed, just like Hulk can with the uh, motorcycle equipped. He's also got some Empower, which is really nice. If you can hypersonic him in there first, then you can charge Hulk in there to make use of that Empower, get even more damage off. But to make Captain America that much more effective up close, we're gonna go ahead and equip him with Skybreaker. In my opinion, this is still one of the best equipments to give him, although Bucky's arm now is right up there. It's pretty much neck and neck for me. Like, I thought about giving him Bucky's arm. It's a really good one. Close Combat Expert and Super Sense is on a six, and it's half the points of this. You know, if you want to save the five points, definitely go that route if you have, you know, the, the Bucky's arm, which I do. But I still really like Skybreaker because it gives him Blades, Claws, Fangs. And once per turn, when this character uses it, after resolutions, you may make an attack, a range attack, with improved targeting adjacent, but only to target the hit character. So it really just, you know, he lets him run up there, hit with Blades which, you know, I know I tend to have pretty decent luck on Blades most of the time. So I know a lot of people don't like Blades if they're not, you know, they don't get lucky with it. I feel like I tend to get pretty good luck on my Blades, so I do like to have that. Um, so he usually gets up there, hits for pretty decent damage. Even if you roll less than his damage value, it's going to do at least two, no matter what. But you do have a good potential of rolling, you know, three or higher to get some more damage in. And if that doesn't one-shot a character, the ability to make another attack, a ranged attack targeting them, is great. Because he does have range, so he can make the range attack legally. And yeah, he just hits for three more at that point. You know, you don't roll blades or anything, whatever. Um, but you could potentially have, you know, bats run up next to you or something and, and get the enhancement off that to do four damage. I don't know. I probably wouldn't. I'd probably keep bats in the back. But that is, you know, a possibility that might happen during a game. So there is that. Uh, but yeah, just Captain America with Skybreaker is able to do a ton of damage to a single target. So you can pretty much just wipe out anything you need to in one go. But moving right along, uh, the last two figures we're playing, I saved them for last this time, but you guys already know, it's the two Scott Porters. <laughs> it's the Porter twins. I know they're on every team build. I know people are probably getting sick of them at this point. Um, so I did have somebody ask to... Uh, you know, if I would give some recommendations for people that either don't have or don't want to play the double Scott Porter combo, uh, just because they're just so good, you know, plus one attack, plus one defense, you know, prob, perplex, TK, healing, support, you know, prob across the map, basically, um, really, really good stuff, plus one for your map role. So they're, of course, there just to be our supporting characters. But like I said, if you guys don't have both of them or don't want to play both of them, let me give you a couple quick um, ideas for what I would play if I wasn't going to use them. And the first one for that would actually probably just be Falcon for 50 points. Uh, he's the rare from Avenger 60th. Of course, he has a special ability where if he moves through a friendly character that shares a keyword with him after resolutions, he can place them adjacent to himself. So it's really good to work with uh, Captain America here because we can't TK him because he's double base. Uh, so you can just have him kind of move through Cap, you know, end his movement, Cat places next to him, and then he can hypersonic all the way into their starting area if they need to. So Falcon's pretty good for that. Um, otherwise, if you just want, you know, some more actual supporting powers, um, you could always go with uh, Scarlet Witch. She's got uh, Sidestep, TK Barrier, Perplex, and Prob Control, but only for opposing characters, I believe. Um, I'm not looking at the card at the moment, but yeah, she's a really good one, and she's only 35 points, so that leaves you another 15 points to work with, um, which... Actually, if you've been counting along, we actually have five more points besides this. Um, so that would actually leave you with 20 points. But I was actually going to go ahead and use the remaining five points of this team for just a uh, Scott Crampton Pog, just because it's another enhancement. He can just uh, sit right next to our uh, Iron Man, get, get some more damage on him. So he's shooting for like seven penetrating damage. Um, although if you don't want to do enhancement or don't have the pog, the other five point option is the pumpkin bombs on Iron Man. Uh, since he already has energy explosion, it'll up the damage to three. So he can do three penetrating damage to everybody with energy explosion. And he's got three targets. So, uh, you know, he could do a ton of damage that way spread around with all the energy explosion. So that's two five point options. Again, if you wanted to drop this from Captain America, 
Monica and give him Bucky's arm instead. That would actually give you 10 points. From there, you could, you know, put like a ring on somebody, probably one of the Scott Porters. Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention, uh, white shirt Scott Porter has all the keywords, so we're gonna give him a yellow lantern ring for the extra perplex and the free constructs because that's just kind of what you what you do, although you could give him a blue ring too. So there's a couple little options. You can kind of mess with those last little five to 10 points as you wish. Uh, and like I said, if you want to drop them all together, you could just do like um, this uh, Scarlet Witch for some support powers. And you'd have 15 to 20 points left over at that point. You could put like uh, maybe a motorcycle on Iron Man for running shot is another good option. So there's a lot of great options there, but this is the actual 300 points I'm running with and it has worked pretty well. And as far as sideline options, you do of course want to have your war machine at the ready, um, even more so in this case. Usually I just put him on there because white shirt Scott Porter has all the keywords. Um, so that works for him, but also especially for our actual Iron Man this time. If you don't know what uh, War Machine does, he does have a sideline active. Whenever one of your Stark Industries people gets hit, basically you can just pop him off the sideline on click number four adjacent to them. And he has some uh, other cool specials there, so you can take a look at that. I don't really feel like explaining them every single time, I'll be honest because I talk about them in every video. Like I also mentioned, Scrappy-Doo is another great sideline option, especially in this case because we have the Scott Crampton Pog, but uh, he's really best to bring in off the sideline from our white shirt Scott Porter because he has all the keywords. So yeah, you know, always wanna have your sideline guys ready to go. So I hope I didn't get too confusing when I was talking about some of the alternate options you can play. The team itself that I'm running is Iron Man at 120, Hulk at 10 with 15 points for a motorcycle to give him the one move with improved movement characters for free uh, and also the combat reflexes. And then for 30 points, we've got bats here for the enhancement and the plus one attack. For only 20 points, we've got two-gun kid as our secondary range attacker and a cheap prob control. For 40 points, we've got Captain America as our leadership and our other good close attacker. And he's equipped for 10 points with the Skybreaker sword to get an extra attack off and get some more damage in. And then we also have, of course, both Scott Porters for 25 points each. And for zero points, the white shirt has the yellow lantern ring equipped. And for the final five points, we've got a, Scra a Scott Crampton Pog to uh, give another enhancement for our Iron Man. And then we've got these dudes on the sideline. So it all works pretty well. You just keep Iron Man up on elevated somewhere, maybe a couple squares back, so they can't easily see him because he can shoot through pretty much everything. He doesn't really care about line of fire at all, except for he can only shoot through one square of blocking terrain. Uh, but his improved targeting is nuts. So you just want to keep him safe back on elevated. You want to keep bats next to him for that uh, enhancement. You want to keep Scott Crampton for the other enhancement uh, next to him as well. Then you probably want to keep like one of the Scott Porters next to him, like this one for the prob and the perplex. And then meanwhile, you know, uh, Captain America hypersonics out there, Hulk heals up and then charges out there. Uh, you could TK uh, the Hulk out there with this Scott Porter if you need to, to help get him a few extra squares. And then Two Gun Kid also kind of just sits up here with, with Iron Man and the enhancements until he needs to go get down in the fight uh, if you don't have enough range. Uh, and that's pretty much all there is to it. You got two good snipers up there in a sniper's nest. You got two good close attackers out there doing the work. And you'd be surprised uh, between how much damage these guys can all deal with the enhancements and stuff. Uh, things go down pretty quick. And even if they do kill off Captain America, um, it's really, really hard to get through Hulk if he gets some good healing right off the bat. And then it is really, really hard to get through Iron Man uh, if they just can't get up to him fast enough. He can just be blasting people for so much damage. And even if they do, you know, you got Two-Gun Kid up there with him. You got uh, Pulse Wave Scott Porter up there with him. So he's not like alone, like he's got plenty of backup. So that does it for this team build. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video or got anything out of it, make sure to smash that like button because it does help me out a lot. And don't forget to click the subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. And if you'd like to help support the channel, even more, don't forget to check the links in the description for the Patreon or hit that join button there for the YouTube memberships. Either way, for as little as $1 a month, you get entered into our monthly giveaways and see your name here in the credits with all these other awesome people. So check that out if that interests you, but that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, this has been HeroClix Headquarters, signing off.